If you are like millions and millions of Americans, then you have a similar problem. And I wanna ask you this one question. All you gotta do is hit the like button if this is you. If you are currently struggling to put food on the table, put money into a savings account, put money into a retirement account, pay down your debts, or just keep a roof over your head, go ahead and hit that like button because you are like millions and millions of Americans. Right now, we are living in a very difficult time. We're living in a time where inflation is still out there. And I hate to say this because, you know, I'm, I'm I guess, part of the media as well, but the media keeps on saying inflation's going down. No, it's not. Prices are actually going up. That's why this is so concerning. Millions of Americans are struggling to just pay their basic needs. And at the same time, inflation isn't going down. We're not seeing deflation. We're seeing additional inflation at 3.2%. Now, I bring this up because I was sent a bunch of articles just this morning, and I wanna to touch on some of these. Cause look at this, I wanna show you this. It says Americans, have a frightening new financial problem, and it's about to get worse. What are they talking about? Are they talking about uh, our jobs? Because yes, our jobs are in question. Not only are we worried about our jobs, because right now, if we see the Federal Reserve continue to raise rates, that's gonna put more pressure on businesses, and if businesses feel the pressure and need to make additional profits, because well, their shareholders say they need to, guess what? They're gonna lay off employees. When they do that, you could, could potentially be out of a job. But that's not what they're talking about here. What they're actually talking about here, I don't wanna read you some of this. It says US households are blowing through their pandemic era savings with many consumer accounts getting going bust in the third quarter of 2023. That's coming up. And it goes on to say this. It says the Fed cites two studies, one completed in May and a current report released this week. They showed that while American households stacked up savings during the pandemic, those funds are being rapidly depleted in a high inflation economy. But you want to know how bad that actually is? Well, look at this. Okay, let me show you, let me show you a couple numbers really quick. So right here says our analysis suggested that some $500 billion of the 2.1 trillion in total accumulated excess savings remained in the aggregate economy by March of 2023. That means that of the $2.1 trillion, okay, we have used three quarters of it, a little over three quarters of it. We only have $500 billion left. That is a lot of money, 500 billion is a lot of money. However, it's not gonna save us forever. Now, I wanna show you one other thing. Look at this. It says, here's why Americans can't stop living paycheck to paycheck. This came out just yesterday. Now, the reason why I, saw, I thought this was very interesting is because it's not talking about pandemic era savings. It's not talking about our, our jobs. It's talking about inflation and one other thing. And it's actually talking about, you see it right here, median rent in the US. That is a huge problem. It says the median rent in the US was $2,029 as of June, according to Redfin. That amount already accounts for 61% of median take home pay. So right now we're, we're seeing reports that we're, we're actually spending our savings, which is problematic. The second one is we are spending 61% of the median take home pay on rent. 61% of our pay is going to rent, right? That is very concerning. But there's also something else. I wanna read you this right here. It says, if you combine that with the average $690.75 Americans spend each month on food and out-of-pocket health expenditures that costs the average American of $96.40 monthly, you get a total expense of $2,816 for renters and $2,700 for homeowners. Let me ask you this. 
how many of you could spend $2,800 on food, out-of-pocket healthcare costs, okay, and rent? Those three things, $2,800 per month on three things. This means your utility bills are not covered. Your car payment is not covered. Uh, you want to pay put fuel in your vehicle? Well, that isn't covered. You want to go see a movie? You want to pay for a cell phone? You want to pay for internet so you can watch some of my videos? Well, that's not covered. So when you add up all those other things, the average American is closer to $4,000 per month. And let me ask you this. How many of you could afford $4,000 per month in payments? And get this. You still got to put money aside for savings. Still put money aside for, right? Yeah, investments, retirement. Yeah, how can you do that? How can you afford that if you're not making that much money? Well, this is why some say it's only going to get worse. This is an article from Bloomberg. It says US housing affordability hits worst point in nearly four decades. And I can tell you it is. Millions of Americans cannot afford a home. They cannot afford to rent a home. Not only because they can't afford the payment, but they can't afford the first and last month and the deposit. Those three things pretty much take your millions of people just out of the running. They just can't afford it. Now, I, I'm only bringing this next thing up because this is something that many people were saying, he, he's done a lot. He's really helped. Okay, look at this. It says a year later, the Inflation Reduction Act likely hasn't reduced inflation. We'll give it time. And I bring this up because the Inflation Reduction Act, or the, the IRA is what they're calling it, this is something that they, they made promises, but some of these promises were more future promises. The reason why we're seeing this, the reason why we see inflation coming down here, right? because the Inflation Reduction Act this passed here, so it's signed into law, the reason why we're seeing this drop is because of a bunch of different things. It's because of, you know, people just can't afford to put food on the table, can't afford to buy new things. The other issue, the one of the big ones, is this, this whole thing happened. Let me show you the chart really quick again. Right here, this is where we really started to see inflation. And the reason why we saw inflation here is simply because uh, factories were shut down, manufacturing was... Uh, you know, completely shifted. Uh, we saw truckers weren't delivering uh, your know, goods. Uh, the American people were demanding products. They wanted it then and there, and they bought whatever was available. This caused prices to just go sky high. The reason why that's so that's the reason why we're seeing this. That's the reason why we're seeing it come down because everybody bought the new furniture, bought the new car, bought the the home that they wanted, especially here. Well, why wouldn't you have bought a home somewhere along here in 2020, 2021, where prices were still somewhat decent and interest rates were low? That's why we're seeing uh, disinflation now. It's not because of the Inflation Reduction Act. And that's why I think so interesting right now is that the American people are struggling. But what we're being told is that, well, you're struggling for this, that, and the other thing, not because of what's actually happening. So, just wanted to fill you in on what's going on at this time. I know a lot of people are still struggling, trying to figure out and get their, kind of wrap their head around it. Like, how are we gonna get out of this? Well, it's gonna be a long and rough journey, but we will get out of it. It's just gonna take some time. So, that's what I got for you guys today. Again, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you have a wonderful rest of your day. Consider subscribing. I'll see you guys on the next 